وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى وإن الشرح of the كتاب أخلاق حملة القرآن written by الإمام أبو بكر محمد بن الحسين الآجري رحمه الله The author رحمه الله He said باب فضل حملة القرآن He said حدثنا أبو العباس حامد بن محمد بن الشعيب البلخي قال حدثنا يعقوب الدورقي قال حدثنا عبد الرحمن بن مهدي عن عبد الرحمن بن بديل عن عبي عن أبيه عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لله من الناس أهلون قيل من هم يا رسول الله قال أهل القرآن هم أهل الله وخاصته The author رحمه الله In this first chapter he is going to mention the virtue of the ones who are carrying the Qur'an. Babu fadli hamalati al-Qur'an. The word fadli in the Arabic language is a singular. The word fadl is a singular. And the plural of the word fadl is fadail. Fadail. Fadail is a plural of the word fadl. Now, when we were reading the word um, when we were reading the chapter we say babu fadli hamalati al-quran so when we translate it in english we say chapter the virtues we make it plural even that the word fadl is a singular so how do we reconcile between that because the author is going to mention the virtues he's not just going to mention one virtue for the people who are carrying the quran or the carriers of the quran in the arabic language there's a qaida and there's a principle in the Arabic language and it's also a principle stated and mentioned by the scholars of Qawaid al-Fiqhiyya and Usul al-Fiqhiyya and wa ma ila dhalik they mention this which is that if a singular is ascribed to something a singular Arabic word if it's mudaf meaning it's ascribed to something it shows umum that is general al-mufrad idha udifa if the mufrad is ascribed it benefits that it's general and it shows the meaning of fadail as though you're saying virtues so the word fadl now becomes fadail virtues Allah mentions an example like that in the Quran Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala wa in ta'uddu ni'matallahi if you count the blessings we make it general look at that we say if you were in ta'uddu ni'matallahi if you count the blessings of Allah but here Allah mentioned ni'ma and ni'ma is a singular word and the plural of the word ni'mah is ni'am. But the qa'ida is al-mufrad. Uh, the mufrad word, إِذَا أُضِيفَ يُفِيدُ الْعُمُومِ وَلِذَلِكَ عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَنِ نَاصِرِ سَعْدِيُّ He says in his kitab al-qawaid al-fiqiyya كَذَاكَ مَنْ وَمَا تُفِيدَانِ مَعَا كُلَّ الْعُمُومِ يَا أُخَيَّ فَاسْمَعَا And then he goes on to say وَمِثْلُهُ الْمُفْرَدُ إِذْ يُضَافُ فَفَهَمْ هُدِيتَ الرُّشْدَ مَا يُضَافُ So the mufrad, if it's mudaf, so we say babu the chapter fadlu fadli sorry hamalatil quran the chapter that speaks about the virtues of the people who are carrying the quran another point that we want to look at when it comes to the chapter is that the author rahimahullah used the word hamalatil quran the carriers of the quran he used the word carriers of the quran the question here is, what does it mean, carriers of the Qur'an? Hamalatil Qur'an. Hamala, the one who's carrying. Hamil, the one who's carrying the Qur'an. What does it actually mean? The one who carries the Qur'an means the one who's carrying its wordings. And he's got the wordings of the Qur'an in his chest. And the Qur'an, brothers and sisters, 
it originates or is originally placed in the hearts. The Quran, where it should be normally, is in the hearts. The Quran shouldn't have to be in books or in papers. And people have to memorize the Quran. Allah mentions in the Quran, بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ That the Quran, it's in the hearts and the chest of the people of knowledge. And when the Quran first came down, it didn't come down written. It came down to the heart of the Prophet. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍّ مُبِينٍ So Allah mentions that the Qur'an was placed in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's heart and in his chest. And even when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had tried to recite the Qur'an with Jibreel and he was trying to quickly memorize, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَا تُحَرِّكْ بِهِ لِسَانَكَ لِتَعْجَلَ بِهِ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَ What does it mean, إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَ And leave it to us, Muhammad. We are the ones that are going to place the Qur'an in your chest. We're going to place it in your heart. We're going to make sure you memorize it. So don't be, uh, don't hasten. We're going to make sure that the Qur'an is in your heart. So the word, Hamalati uh, al-Qur'an means definitely the one who memorizes the wording of the Qur'an. Yani he, he is good in his you know, memorization of the wordings. But it has another meaning, the word Hamalati al-Qur'an, which is the one who also understands and implements the Qur'an, which is another two extra things. Hamalati al-Qur'an means a person who's carrying the meaning and is also carrying the implementation. Yani he's implementing these wordings. And this is very vital and important. Three things is what it means, Hamalat al-Qur'an. It means the person has at-tilawa uh, sahiha And everyone has to write this down because it's very important and it's a very important point. The word Hamalat al-Qur'an, it encompasses, it actually means three things. At-tilawa sahiha correct pronunciation, correct articulation of the wordings of the Qur'an. The second thing is that the person has the application of the Qur'an is correct, meaning the person implements the Qur'an correctly into their life. Correctly. This verse, you've perfected its implementation in your life. You're doing a good job in, in implementing the Qur'an, in taking on the awamir, the commandments are in the Quran, which are in the Qur'an, the prohibitions that are in the Qur'an. That is, the second one is, the second part is, husnul uh, tatbiq. Husnul tatbiq means, Perfecting the application of the Quran. The third one is Al-Fahm um, Al-Sahih. The person has correct understanding of the Quran. The person has the correct understanding uh, of the Quran and that the person isn't um, understanding the Quran to be uh, what it isn't. That's what the author means by when he says Hamalatil Quran. Now, the evidence to show that just memorizing the wordings doesn't mean that you're a carrier of the Qur'an. And that's the sad reality that we're living in today. We're actually seeing people who do not know what they have memorized. And they don't know the Qur'an. They haven't understood the Qur'an. They don't know what Allah is commanding them here and they don't know what Allah is prohibiting them here. They haven't understood it. Nor are they even implementing the Qur'an in their lives. And then we call these people the carriers of the Qur'an. And that's a mistake because look at this. Allah mentions that the Jews, the Jews who had known the Torah, who were carrying the Torah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that they weren't really carrying the Torah because they weren't implementing it in their lives. Allah says, They didn't carry it. The authors use the same word. They knew the Torah. They understood the Torah. They knew the Torah inside out. But the Jews did not implement it. And that's what Allah wa ta'ala said. They were not the carriers of the Torah. The Torah was given to them, but they didn't carry it in their lives. And that's what Allah wa ta'ala, he stripped from them the word, ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا They didn't implement it. وَلِذَلِكَ um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't attribute a person to the Quran if he's not a person who's if the person is not carrying the implementation as much as the wordings with him. And you're not from the people of the Qur'an if you're not carrying the wording and the meaning together and the implementation. You're not from the people of the Qur'an. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us a very powerful point in the Quran. Nabiullah Nuh had a son, and the son of Nabiullah Nuh, as we all know, wasn't a believer. When the rain descended and came from the sky, and Allah wa ta'ala was going to destroy the creation, Nuh informed his son, and he said to his son, Look, you're going to get destroyed here. Come with me, and you'll be saved. And he said to his father, Sa'awi ila ruku, sa he, said, he said to his father in response, uh, Sa'awi ila jabali ya'simuni min al-ma'. He said, my father, I'm going to go to a mountain that will protect me from this rain. Don't worry. Don't, don't worry about me. I've got, I've got it under control. And then Nabi Lahi, uh, Nabi Lahi Nuh spoke to his son and he said to him, this is not going to save you today. This is not going to protect you today. The only people who are going to be saved are the people who, who are with me. He's talking to his son. This is the dialogue that happens between them. And then what happens as they are talking to each other, uh, a, a, a tide of water comes in between them and he destroys his son. And Nuh saw that, became emotional from that. So Nuh went to his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and conversed with his Lord, Allah azza wa jalla, spoke to him. And Nabiullah Nuh said to Allah wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, that was my son. He's my son. He's my offspring. And I saw him die today. And he's a father. He feels the pain. And then Allah wa ta'ala said something very powerful to him, Nabiullah Nuh, which is Allah said to him, Innahu laysa min ahlik. This child, he's not from your family. إِنَّهُ عَمَلٌ غَيْرُ صَالِحٍ Another qira'a, it says, another qira'a says, إِنَّهُ عَمِلَ غَيْرَ صَالِحٍ This child, he's not your family who underline this. I want you to all ponder and contemplate on this point. He is not from your family. Why? Because his actions were not good. Later when we come to the hadith, inshallah ta'ala, where we see that inna lillahi uh, ahleen, Allah has a people, Allah has a ahl, a, a people on this earth. The people of Allah are who? The ones who implement the Quran, right? Action. Nuh, I want, to see, I want you to see the comparison here. Nuh's son is not from his family, his father's family, because his actions were different to his father's actions. And if someone is not in line with the Quran, He's not from the people of the Qur'an. The same way Nuh's son is not from his father's family because his actions were not in accordance to his father's actions. Does that make sense, brothers? It's very important. So the uh, people who are carrying the Qur'an are the ones who've memorized it. The ones who implemented it. The ones who understood it. Those are the carriers of the Qur'an. If today someone was to memorize, for example, the Qawluhu Ta'ala, so to make the matter very clear to all of you guys, someone memorized the ayah, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيْمَةَ And the ayah says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Allah says, we did not command them anything except to worship me alone. So someone memorized that verse. He learned it with all of the recitations. He learned the tajweed. He learned the tatbiq and the application of this verse and how to articulate and to say it. And his voice is so beautiful. And he knows the ghunna and the med and everything. But then he goes and he calls on to other than Allah. Yani he goes and he begs the people in the graves. He calls on to dead people. He calls on to the creation and he doesn't call on to the creator. Will you say this person is the people of the Quran? Or would you say that that person has come with that verse? Is that what you're going to say? No, you're not. He's not implementing the verse. He's only know, he, know, he only knows the wordings. And he doesn't know what? He doesn't know the meaning. He doesn't know or he doesn't implement what it says. This person is not from the people of the, from the Quran. He's not considered to be the carriers of the Quran. So the chapter here is talking about a people who've come with three things. They've come with the wording of the Quran. They know it very well. They've implemented it in their life. And they're acting according to the Quran. And the third one is, they are people who've understood its meaning. They under, their comprehension of the Quran is, is good. The author then, Rahimahullah, he brings a hadith that Anas ibn Malikin narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لِلَّهِ مِنَ النَّاسِ أَهْلُونَ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has a people on this earth. Good. So there's people. There are people who are called Ahlullah wa khasatu. There are people who are called people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Prophet said, Lillahi min al nasi ahlul, there are people, the people of Allah. There are on this earth a people who are known as Ahlullah, the people of Allah. Anas ibn Malik said, the Prophet was then asked, Qila, man hum ya Rasulullah, who are they? Sahabas want to know who these people are because they want to come with these characteristics of being from the people of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, Ahlul Qur'ani, the people of the Qur'an. Are what? Hum ahlullahi wa khasatu. The people of the Quran are what? The people of the Quran are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahlul Quran are considered what? Ahlullah. A person cannot be called ahl of someone if the action of those people is not in line with what the text is saying. And you're not considered from, to be from the people of the Quran if you're not implementing what is in the Quran. Okay, brothers and sisters, we've taken the example of Nabiullah Nuh when Nuh said, Qala ya Nuh, innahu laysa, innahu laysa min ahli. Innahu amalun ghayru salih, amma innahu amila ghayru salih. We took that. Then Imam Al-Ajurri brings a second uh, hadith. He says, Akhbarana Abu Bakr Abdullah ibn Muhammad ibn Abdul Hamid al-Wasitiy. I want to mention a, a benefit, a grammatical benefit. A grammatical benefit, which is Al Wasitiyu. Al we read it with Dhamma, right? It's marfu'ah. We say Al Wasitiyu. Why do we say Al Wasitiyu? Because Al Wasitiyu is a sifa to, is a sifa. For what? For what? For Abu Bakr. Okay? For Abu Bakr. But the question here is, how could you say al wasitiyu is a sifa? And the grammarians, they condition for a word to be considered as a sifa. A sifa is an adjective. For a word to be considered an adjective, according to grammarians, it either has to be mushtaq, I mean it has to be rooted from a word, or it has to be al muawwal min mushtaq. Or it has to be a mazdar. But two are the main, as Ibn Hisham rahimahullah mentions. It's either mushtaq or muawwal. It's mushtaq or muawwal. Those two. And the name al wasiti, it's not mushtaq, it's not muawwal, it's not jumla, and it's not a mazdar. It's not only the four. It's jammed. It's a solid word, not rooted from anything. What do we do in a situation like that? How can you say this a sifa now? It is lacking one of the conditions of allowing it to be a sifa. Ma'adalik is still saying it's a sifa. This is al wasitiyu is a uh, it's a nispa. It's a nispa. And you're attributing this person to somewhere. Al wasiti, al wasit. You're attributing them to that place. And the grammarians, they believe that the, the nisbah يَقُومُ مَقَامَ الْمُشْتَقِ It stands in the position of the mushtaq. It, take, it stands in the position of a word de derived from a root word. وَلِذَلِكَ ibn Malik and he says وَنْعَتْ بِمُشْتَقٍ كَسَعْبٍ وَذَرِبٍ وَشِبْهِ كَذَا وَذِي وَالْمُنْتَسِبِ If the word is a nisbah, okay, it stands in the place of a mushtaq. The Ibn Hajib, who's another great uh, scholar of uh, uh, grammar, and he's the scholar in which Ibn Malik summarized his kitab Khulasa uh, is originally from. Yeah, Al-Fit al Malik that we have today, okay, is a summary from the work of Ibn Hajib originally, sah? It's originally from what? Ibn Hajib. Ibn Malik originally took it from there. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why we say al-wasitiyu. So it's a grammatical benefits. قال حدثنا زياد. Now you, some of you guys on your copy, you're going to see the word thana, for example. When you see this word thana, it's hadathana. You don't read it as thana, you read it as hadathana because back in those days, papers were very expensive. And they had to summarize words. So instead of saying hadathana, they'll cut it down to thana. Instead of saying akhbarada, they will say na. And the price of for paper is very expensive, brothers and sisters. For us, it's all over the place now, huh? So what we have to say is, and plus the word qala is not in there, so we have to bring the word qala. So we say qala, he said, حدثنا زياد بن أيوب قال, again we have to bring them. حدثنا أبو عبيدة الحدادي قال, حدثنا عبد الرحمن بن بديل عن أبيه عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لله أهلنا. Now, if you look at the previous hadith of the chapter and this one, there's a slight difference. The previous one was what? Lillahi min al-nasi ahlun. The previous hadith was what? Lillahi min al-nasi ahlun. And this one is what? Inna lillahi ahlina. Where did this difference come from? Who mentioned this difference? The difference here, and some of the scholars, they call this multaqa sanad. The place where the chain meets. The previous one, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi was the one who narrated from who? Abdul Rahman ibn Budayl. And here, Abu Ubaidat al Haddad is the one who narrated from Abdul Rahman ibn Budayl. Yani two people narrated from Abdul Rahman ibn Budayl. The previous one was Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, and this, this one is Abu Ubaidat al Haddad. Both of whom are the students of who? Abdul Rahman ibn Budayl. So the difference here. Is Abdurrahman Mahdi is narrating it as well, Lillahi min nasi ahluna. And Abu Ubaidat al Haddadu is narrating it with the uh, inna, which then forces the word to become mansub. So, inna lillahi ahlina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a people. Qila man hum, who are they? The Prophet was asked. Who are these people? The Prophet sallallahu he said, Ahlul Qur'ani, the people of the Quran. Hum ahlullahi wa khasatu. They are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of the Quran are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are Ahlullahi. They are the people of who? Allah. This hadith, Al Imam Ahmad narrated it in his Musnad as well. Al Imam Al Ajurriyu narrated it here. And also Al Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal narrated this way in his Musnad. And Sheikh Nasir rahimahullah, Sheikh Nasir al-Din al-Albani, he graded this. A hadith to be sahih in his sahih al jamia There's another hadith that explains this hadith and clarifies a very important point that I kept elaborating on and I kept repeating, which is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said in a hadith sahih Muslim, he said, "Yuta bil Quran yom al qiyamah." The Quran will be brought the day of judgment. Find here. Wa ahlihi ladina and its people. Which ones? Which people? الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ Those who used to implement it. تَقْدُمُهُ صُورَةُ الْبَقَرَةِ وَآلُ عِمْرَانِ And Surah Al Imran and Surah Al Baqarah would go forward. This hadith, the point that I want from it is الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ The hadith mentioned the people of the Qur'an are going to come الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ Those who used to implement it. So when the Prophet ﷺ here, he's saying that أَهْلُ الْقُرْآنِ هُمْ أَهْلُ اللَّهِ وَخَاصَتُهُ That the people of the Qur'an are the people of Allah. And an Imam al-Shatibi is saying in his حِرْزُ uh, الْأَمَانِ وَوَجْهُ التَّهَانِ فَمَا ظَنُّكُمْ بِالنَّجْلِ عِنْدَ جَزَائِهِ أُولَئِكَ أَهْلُ اللَّهِ وَالصَّفَّةُ الْمَلَاءِ That these are the people of Allah. They're referring to the people who have memorized its wording and implemented the uh, Qur'an. Those are the ones. Ibn al-Qayyim, he said in his Zat, he says, وَلِهَذَا كَانَ أَهْلُ الْقُرْآنِ Ibn al-Qayyim says, well, because of that, the people of the Qur'an, هُمُ الْعَالِمُونَ They are the ones who have knowledge of it. And they know the Qur'an. And they know two, two things of the Qur'an. 
They know the wording of the Quran and they also know the meaning of the Quran. Second thing is what? وَالْعَامِلُونَ بِمَا فِيهِ And they also implement what is in the Quran. وَإِنْ لَمْ يَحْفَظُوهُ عَنْ ظَهْرِ الْقَلْبِ Ibn al-Qayyim mentions, even if they didn't memorize it from memory. Yani when we say they know the wordings, it doesn't necessarily mean they memorized it. Ha. If they can read it from the Mus'haf properly, and they are implementing it, Ibn al-Qayyim says, they are the people of the Qur'an. وَأَمَّا مَنْ حَفِظَهُ وَلَمْ يَفْهَمْهُ but what about a person who memorized the Quran? He doesn't need a mushaf. Ha. Like he doesn't imp- he doesn't understand what he memorized. Walam ya'mal and he doesn't implement. Bima fihi falaysa min ahlihi. He's not from the people of the Quran. Wa in aqama hurufahu iqamat al-sahmi. Even if he's accurate in the pronunciation of those words, like the arrow, his accuracy is sharp. Each word is he's hitting the points in his recitations. He's not from the people of the Quran. Ibn al-Qayyim is saying two people. There's one person who memorized the Quran, knows the wordings of the Quran, but doesn't understand it and doesn't implement it. He's not from the people of the Quran and he's not from the people of Allah. Ignore that person. Another person, he doesn't know the Quran in terms of memorization. He hasn't memorized it. Like when he reads it from the Mus'haf, it's very good. His recitation of the Quran is good. He understands what he's reading and he implements it in his life. He is from the people of Allah and he's from the people of the Quran. Ibn al-Qayyim is saying, Rahimahullah ta'ala. In this episode, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to stop there. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan, and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.